If it had not been for the Lord, George's Fulton County District Attorney, Fannie Willis, the prosecutor for the Donald Trump case, would not have said, I'm not on trial here, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. Welcome to Barium Babs. I'm your host, Vali Chikuni. Today, we're going to discuss the, uh, what do they say? Uh, the straw that broke the camel's back. I do think, finally, if she's going to go down with this case, it's because of the appearance that she did to these black churches, okay? Not what transpired in court, but the appearance that she was doing in a court of public opinion in black churches. So she thought she was doing good work, but I think that one is what's just going to destroy everything so i'm going to share with you the video that um i believe is just going to undo the entire uh, entire case the judge is going to come back with a verdict after two weeks so we should be able to hear everything before march 20th okay so i'm gonna play with you the video that i think sealed the deal for fanny willis unbeknownst to her Okay, because I guess she thought, you know, she was just doing whatever she was doing. But, mm, man, this is not looking good. All the glory I receive is his grace, yeah. not a perfect me. Okay. We are at a time in history, people. Hear me on this. We are at a time in history when you can no longer sit back and just let other folks do it. You cannot expect black women to be perfect and save the world. The Lord is completing us. We are not perfect. We need your prayers. We need to be allowed to stumble. We need grace. With that kind of support, we will move mountains and do Jesus' will. Stumbling all the way. So his flawed, hard-headed, and imperfect child has a message for each of you today. Please find a way to do your extraordinary, God-given assignment yes. and make this community and the world a better place for all of his people. Yes. See, it is never about who you are. That's it, that's it. it is always about the great I am and who he is. See, we are all flawed, sinners, unworthy, imperfect, damaged, uh -huh. but we are qualified upon his call. You can find common ground with people of all different ideologies if you simply commit yourself to being obedient and steadfast in your efforts and his work. If you commit yourself, God will turn your hard-headed self into the extraordinary for his kingdom. Thank you. There you have it. Okay, so I do think this video of Fanny Willis showing up at this particular black church is what has killed her career if she ends up losing the case okay i don't think i mean i don't think they've proved their case because they're relying on the judge to make the judgment that's not how it works in court you are supposed to present everything to the judge and the judge will just you know go by the evidence that you present even though the judge might know all these things uh they're lying unless you produce evidence beyond a reasonable doubt before the judge hey man we're going to see so why do I say that this is what's going to seal Fanny, uh, Fanny Willis's career if she ends up losing the case, okay? So I'm going to play with you what took place in court during closing arguments, okay? So here we go. We were in court that Friday of that week in which I made it known that we, that is President Trump, may adopt that motion. I waited to see, wanted to see what was going to happen before I did so. That Sunday, which would be January the 14th, 2024, DA Willis took it upon herself to go to a, which would be January the 14th, 2024, DA Willis took it upon herself to go to a historic black church in Atlanta, having not responded at all to the motion of Ms. Merchant's client, Roman. And she made what we now call the church speech. And your honor has reference to that. Uh, you didn't necessarily want evidence on that, but you know what the church, spe church speech was. It was videoed. It was clear that Ms. Uh, Willis had notes. She was reading from notes that she had prepared. It was a calculated determination by Ms. Willis to prejudice the defendants and their counsel. 
How so? By making an issue out of the fact that the person that was challenged in the Roman motion was black. Without telling the public or the church members or anyone for that matter that the reason that Mr. Uh, Wade was being challenged was not because he was black, had nothing to do with race. It had to do with the relationship that had been alleged and later admitted to by Ms. Merchant. Ms. Willis took full opportunity to prejudice the defendants and then comes along later in a pleading and says it wasn't designed or intended to be at the defendants at all or the defense counsel, which with all due respect is just nonsense. The purpose of that was to get public sympathy, public empathy for what Ms. Merchant had already alleged in her motion. So I think that the trips that Fanny Willis was doing in the churches, it's what's just going to seal her career if she ends up losing the case. That was not the only uh, defense attorney who brought up this uh, church situation. OK, so let's listen in to another one of the attorneys who brought up the issue about the church. Okay, I thought that was very interesting. Like, OK. <laughs> not good not good god is that uh, is it that some uh, that some will never see a black man as qualified no matter his achievements again the deflection what is what is she saying the listener is not necessarily in that audience in that church the listener is in at fulton county the potential jurors who will come into a courtroom and say whether or not they can fairly judge the evidence or judge the uh, the, the defense in this case she chose to inject race into the minds of the listeners and virtually everybody in this community and literally everybody in this country has reviewed and, and analyzed her speech that she made in a premeditated way. And in, in bringing in not only the race card, but also in, 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 in bringing in the, the religious matter, this is exactly what Hammonds v. State and our Supreme Court talks about uh, condemning as an inflammatory appeal to the juror's private religious beliefs. Why would she do that? To deflect. But now, not only is she deflecting, but she is then going forward and, in a way, telling the community, telling the congregation that God is on her side, not on the side of these people. God, she said, uh, and when she's talking uh, and she's saying, God, pray for their souls. I, meaning God, qualified you. I qualified your imperfect, flawed self. I see you in every hour. Do my work. As though she's telling the folks in her very, very, very uh, implicit way, injecting into the minds of the jurors, God wants me to win this case. God wants me to prosecute this case. And why is he going, and why are these others going after uh, the black man? Well, the answer is very simple, as we said in our brief. We didn't mention uh, Mrs. Cross, uh, Ms. Cross, the white female, or Mr. Floyd, the white male, because there was absolutely no evidence, and is no evidence, of a personal romantic relationship with them in which he obtained uh, these benefits. That's the reason why we, uh, uh, we did not uh, uh, do that. So the, she goes forward with her, uh, with, the, with the, oh, well, maybe it all balanced out, even though I can't prove it uh, with the cat. Don't you love it when this uh, gentleman refers, like she's going around <laughs> telling the community, <laughs> telling the community. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Oh yeah, accusing other people that yeah, God is on her side. <laughs> Why can't God be on the side of other people? So all in all, I think this, uh, you know, it has been entertaining. Okay, it has definitely been entertaining. So we're going to see exactly what's going to transpire. But if you think that was all, the black churches have just decided to forego preaching the word of God. They've just adopted to be preaching the gospel of Fanny Willis. So there's quite a number of churches who've gone it out of their way to use the pulpit, I mean, to prop up Fanny Willis. And it's been funny. This just reminds me of kind of like what happened with the O.J. Simpson case. So now I think like, you know, these black churches have just come out of woodwork. Okay, we're just going to stand, you know, defending Fanny Willis, regardless of her situation. Uh, this, you know, I mean, like, it's just so embarrassing. There's no need for church to be behaving this way. But, you know, this is exactly what is going on. So we're going to share with you uh, some, you know, clips that's been going around uh, with these black churches propping Fanny Willis. Okay.
been for the Lord. Dr. Martin Luther King would not have, a, have had a dream if it had not been for the Lord. George's Fulton County District Attorney Fanny Willis, the prosecutor for the Donald Trump case, would not have said, I'm not on trial here. No matter how hard you try to put me on trial, these people should be on trial for trying to steal the election in 2020 if it had not been for the Lord. Yes, that is the gospel funny. Just really. this week, we saw a group of white attorneys trying to publicly lynch District Attorney Fanny Willis and all her black womanness on national TV. Well, it ain't about funny. The lynching wasn't just about the person that was hanging from the lynching tree. The lynching was a message to let us know that there go you if you don't stay in your place. I think we have a new black history figure that will go down in the history books. Her name happens to be Fonnie Willis. That woman has a backbone. She said, I came running down here. At some point, you just can't let lies continue to be said about you. Hey man, it's important for us to have pride in who we are. Here Fonnie comes in, walks in, wanna strut in. People didn't even know she was on the docket. People didn't even know that she was coming. But she came in a bright pink dress on. I want y'all to see me. I ain't got nothing to hide. When you wanna destroy people and their reputation, you find out like that. The decree was designed to take away his authority and his life. Isn't that what they're trying to do to Fannie Willis? If we can waste enough of the court's time on her and the chief prosecutor, maybe we can make it to November without him being tried. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Everything is not equal in America, and there are often smoke screens like Fannie Willis's personal decisions that try to detract from the facts of the case. They're going to kick her off the case, and then somebody go free. That's what it's all about. They flipped it. It's been flipped. They would rather have us watch a trial about Fannie Willis and be distracted from the fact that Donald Trump is still guilty as hell. The man who's on trial has said everything profane that you could possibly say. Told us that you can grab a woman by her private parts, and we have yet to hear an outlash even from the white church, the white evangelical church, on his behavior. And these lawyers come into a courtroom in Fulton County, Georgia, and attack Fonnie Willis and say she's disqualified. They won't disqualify him to be president, but they'll disqualify her from this case. You can talk about whether or not out of marriage. You can do all that stuff. Two consenting adults. They couldn't prove. They have not proved that there was any financial benefit. Fonnie Willis came down in the courtroom, and she decided that she was going to take him on head on. She walked up to the table, just threw the nose on the table, said, let's get it on. I'm ready. And she fought for what she had worked for, Amen. that it not be somehow besmirched by Lies. If I've never been a proud black man before in my life, I've been a proud black man this week. She ran to the courtroom, took that stand. There was a man in the Bible who said what he said and stood by what he said. And if you go to John chapter 9, we find that there was a man born blind. Now understand, before you read chapter 9, if you go back and read chapter 8, you find that the Pharisees were very angry with Jesus. They were trying to set Jesus up, just like Trump's attorneys were trying to set up Fannie Willis and trying to make Jesus say something that would get him in trouble. Ooh, ooh. She killing it, ain't she? <laughs> they can't do nothing. Fanny Willis, they were trying to talk about, she was using a man. I don't need no man to take care of me. That woman, she, whew, they can't do nothing with her. I love my black women. I ain't gonna even lie. Yeah, I don't care what they say. Malcolm X once said that the most disrespected person in America is the black woman. You're the bottom of the totem pole, even though black women birthed this country, kept this country going. I don't know if anybody's watching Fanny Willis. She is a black woman, and she's being crucified for something that Donald Trump did. And I like the way she's being bold. And many people are saying, oh, she's saying too much. She's doing too much. She's angry. Well, put yourself in her shoes. If your personal life was being put on trial, you would be angry as well. When Anita Hill was speaking out against Clarence Thomas, they called into question her character, her integrity. It's the same playbook. Every time a black woman ascends into some type of leadership position, what they try to do to discredit them is talk about saying they're promiscuous, they're over-sexualized. They had it coming with how they dress, with how they spoke, with how they look. As black women, they will use your sexuality against you. All right, so yes, yeah, you can see, is a whole bunch of uh, these black churches, instead of preaching the word of God, they are busy promoting, praising funny ways. And using all sorts of things, trying to, uh, you know, make it the same as something like from the scripture and everything. You're not going to find anything. Okay. Instead of using this moment, an opportunity of showing um, women, right, you know, to be godly women. Not only that, finally was just showed up over there like, you know, she's a feminist. I don't need no man, this, that, and the third. That's not the attitude that women should be, should be having. 
these churches could have used that opportunity to teach women, use that opportunity as to see this is what happens when people get divorced, right? When women are single, when people don't take care of their uh, of their business. You know what I'm saying? When you're mixing things, you know, there so many lessons that they could have drawn out of this. None whatsoever. But they're not choosing to do that. Instead, they are praising Fanny Willis left and right in church. No, I don't think this is a discussion to be uh, what they're doing in the churches. It's not good. It's shameful. It's embarrassing. I'm interested to know what you guys think about this whole debacle. Okay. Do you think Fanny Willis is going to win the case? What do you think about these churches that are promoting the gospel of Fanny Willis? Let me know. Be sure to leave me a comment. All right, guys, that is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative to you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Stay tuned. More coming this week. Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you. Thank you.